I hope you like this. If you do, give it a thumbs up and leave any comments below. And remember to subscribe to the channel to be kept up to date on all my hypnotic bedtime stories. So I hope you enjoy the story. So as you drift comfortably asleep with your eyes closed, you can listen to me tell this story in the background, guiding you through this experience. And I don't know whether you'll drift deeper and deeper asleep with the sound of my words or the spaces between my words as you comfortably fall asleep. And so you can have a sense of sitting back in a spaceship that's about to launch. And you've got your legs slightly up in the air. You're tilted backwards. You can see through the small windows, noticing the blue sky above you. You can feel the movement, the slight judders, sensations passing through the spaceship as it prepares to launch. You can hear in your ears someone talking through different checks that they're doing, checking that all the systems are okay, that everything's working fine. You can feel the tightness, the comfortable secureness of being fastened into that seat. You can have a sense of curiosity, a sense of excitement, at this journey you're about to go on. Then you can hear in your ears as the countdown begins to lift off from 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, Three, two, one, lift off. And then as that spaceship lifts off the ground, you can feel the forces pushing on your body, feel the excitement running through you. As you lift off, noticing the sky turning darker, Noticing how much the spaceship is juddering and shaking. Knowing that somewhere behind you, all that fuel is burning rapidly to launch you up into space. Pushing and launching you up into space. And as you reach space and leave the Earth's atmosphere, so you notice a sudden shift where you become weightless and you hear them saying in your ears about the successful launch and then you start directing the spacecraft on its journey its journey to a new world and you fire thrusters that accelerate you even faster towards this new world. Because you know that a new world was discovered by telescopes. A world that seemed to show signs of life. And it's your role to go and investigate this world. To go and check out what life is on this world. And so you accelerate through space. Accelerating faster and faster as you go deeper and deeper asleep. Accelerating faster and faster through space. Noticing the clarity of the stars in the sky. Colours of nebulae. Accelerating on your journey. And for the first half of the journey, the acceleration means that you work your muscles. 
means that your muscles keep active and require effort to move. Because it will be only when you get halfway through your journey that deceleration will occur. And that rate of deceleration will allow you to exercise your muscles facing a different direction. And so you get up and you move around. And you check out different equipment you're going to be using. Just quite mindless tasks, just looking through equipment, looking through descriptions of this planet you're heading towards. And you can have a sense of curiosity about this planet, what you might find there. It's far enough away that scientists couldn't work out exactly what was there. But they could tell it had green on it, which is unusual. And it seemed to have blue and water. And it seemed very earth-like. And so you've taken many precautions that make this safe. And most of the journey is automated. If there's any problems, you can always take over the controls. But everything was pre-planned. The various space agencies that worked on this space flight have sent so many space probes, so many craft to different places. They know how to program in what has to go where and when and how. And so most of this is you just along for the ride, enjoying the view, taking pictures out the windows, traveling further than anyone has ever traveled before in a spacecraft, going deeper and deeper into space. And your spacecraft is fitted with a generator that creates a magnetic field around the craft. And so as you leave the solar system, you notice what looks like an aurora around the ship. You can see colours of dancing light around the outside of the ship following the magnetic field lines of the ship as you interact with the solar wind and interstellar space. And you know that outside of the ship there's silence and peace. Although you know that in stars and other places, there's a lot of chaos, there's a lot of destruction in interstellar space, in the void there's peace and calm and stillness, wherever you look there appears to be stillness. And something that you consider interesting as you make this journey is the fact that to you it doesn't feel like you're going that fast. And yet, in reality, you're going faster than any human has ever been before.
and are halfway to your destination. You can't even see your destination yet, just a speck of light of the star you're heading towards, that you know there's a planet around that star, and it still just looks like a speck of light. You can't see the planet at all, and yet you know where you're headed. And at the halfway point, deceleration begins. And while the deceleration begins, you don't really notice, other than the fact that the gravity effect on the ship has shifted to a new direction. And so now all the working out that you do, all the movement you do, is in relation to a gravity effect in a new direction. And as time goes on, you notice pinprick of light getting larger and larger and you start noticing little dots coming into focus and the ship is perfectly on track with where one of those little dots will be on arrival And then gradually, those little dots get larger and larger. Until you can notice some subtle features, and you notice the one you're heading towards. You notice that it has an earth-like feel to it. It looks like a marble, a bit like the earth. And the only part of this journey that isn't automated is the landing. Because no telescope had been able to see clear enough to identify a landing spot. It was possible to identify areas that were land and areas that were water but not at a high enough resolution to identify a space to land. But it was trusted that there'll be one. And so as you reach the planet, the ship slows right down, falls into orbit around the planet, And as it circles the planet, taking about 90 minutes each revolution around the planet, you see the day side and the night side. And the ship scans the planet, circling that planet for a few days scanning most of the planet in high resolution to identify a few landing spots. And then it's your role to go down to the surface and this ship stays up here while a ship that's on this ship will launch down to the surface. And it's much smaller, but it has incredibly powerful thrusters. So it lands like an aeroplane, 
takes off like an aeroplane, but only requires a very short runway space, and it can land and take off on rough terrain. using one set of thrusters that accelerate it rapidly on the ground and then another set of thrusters when it's high up in the sky just to break free of the gravitational pull of the uh, of the planet so that it can join the ship again And so once a landing space is identified, you go and get in to that craft. You strap yourself in. You notice the airlock open beneath the craft, it lowers down at the bottom of the craft. You hear a hiss as you detach and then there's silence as you silently fly down towards the planet. And the planet looks Earth-like and at the same time is unrecognisable. When you pass down into the atmosphere, noticing orange and reds around you, as the front of your craft gets incredibly hot and the craft vibrates, and then after about 30 seconds you break through that You've slowed considerably and you're flying just like a plane in the atmosphere. And it had been identified that the atmosphere was incredibly similar to Earth's atmosphere. That it was breathable and perfectly fine for humans. but you'll still be wearing a mask just to filter anything out of the atmosphere so that all you're breathing is the air. And you land the craft. And climb out of the craft. And notice that you're along the edge of a river bank. There's flowing water and you take it in, you take in the oar, you look at the sky. You notice trees that don't look like earth trees. You notice there's animals and sounds that sound a bit bird-like but different. Everything seems to have a slightly different pitch. And you start following the river. You analyse the water, take a sample. You place a camera down into the water and have a remote control to steer that camera in the water. To get some video footage of under the water and some sound with the hydrophone on the camera from under the water. You notice swimming creatures, fish-like creatures. You then get your camera back out of the water and continue your journey along the edge of that river, heading towards the mountain the river's flowing down from. You want to explore that area. And you decide that 
the easiest way to explore it would be to use your transport you've got on your lander. So you head back to the lander and you get the transport out of your lander and it's like a motorbike. It's got two wheels, it's got a built-in gyroscope, keeps it quite upright. It's able to go off-road. It's very powerful. And yet it's electric-powered, and so it's very quiet. And the area where the cyclist sits is totally enclosed. So you climb into it, you seal it, and then you speed off in the direction of the mountains. And as you near the mountains, you notice something huge in the sky. You notice that it's a vast dragon. Well, that's the only way you could describe it. And as you're speeding along at high speed, you notice it diving down towards you. And it breathes out fire, but not fire like dragons on TV, breathing out fire like a, a spray of fire. It breathes out fire in like pulses, like fire bombs, and it seems to explode next to you as you swerve to avoid where it's landing, and it catches fire to the ground. And then another ball of fire explodes the other side of you, just where you're heading, and so you swerve and avoid that. And then the dragon dives down and you swerve to avoid its feet, almost as if it was trying to grab hold of your bike and lift you off the ground. And you then turn away from the river, turn into some woodland where the trees all look different, yet similar to trees on earth. And they may not even be like trees, but it's the best way you can describe them with the greens and the browns. And you swerve between the trees at high speed, swerving, dodging all the branches, all the stumps, all the tree trunks. And then after a while you swerve back out again, back towards that mountain. And go off-road up that mountain. wanting to be able to survey the land, get some views from the top of the mountain. And as you approach the top of the mountain, you notice that there are buildings up here. Not buildings like you'd ever seen on earth. The closest you could imagine resembling these buildings are a little bit like the stonework of pyramids with symbols on them. But it was kind of built into the mountain. Like the people that built this somehow just used the environment rather than damaging the environment and tried to live within nature and within the environment. And you didn't know who these people were. They obviously weren't earth people, but they're obviously an intelligent race and they may still live around here. And you notice pictures in these buildings, in the stonework, as your bike passes by them 
and through some of the structures, through archways of steps and paths heading up the mountain. And you reach the top and then you stop. And you get out and you go into the topmost building. And from in there you notice there's what looks like a window but no glass. And you gaze out over the land. You can see the river. You can see down to your ship. You can see the woodland or the forest and see that there's more than one dragon and that the dragon was probably just deterring you in some way or maybe saw you like prey. And you notice as you look off into the distance Huge trees that tower way above the forest. You notice other mountains. You can see other dragons. You can see flocks of flying creatures that are bird-like. And you explore the writing on the walls, the symbols on the walls. You take images that you can analyze later. You then head back down from the mountain. You're gonna to have to spend the night here before heading back to your ship. And so you go down the mountain, you decide to go back through the woods to avoid being spotted by the dragon. You go back through the woods, back to your craft. You upload everything from your craft up to the spacecraft circling the planet. And you settle down for the night, drifting comfortably asleep, feeling safe in the craft. And then As this planet's sun rises in the morning, you awaken and on foot you just go for a little wander, taking in the area, taking some samples, sending a drone up into the sky to fly around and survey the area and get some more footage. And you hear different sounds of different animals. And you take photos of different animals of different sizes. As you quietly walk through the woodland, quietly walk along the edge of the woodland. Quietly follow the river. And then after you've got all this footage, you go back to your ship and you begin to look through all those symbols again and somehow intuitively you start to learn knowledge. You start to understand these symbols and what they mean about living in harmony with the environment, in harmony with the world around you, in harmony with yourself. And 
and then you launch your craft, take off into the atmosphere, fly around a little bit, take in this planet. before circling higher up to the top of the atmosphere button feeling those thrusters fire hearing those thrusters fire as you launch yourself out of the atmosphere into space noticing stillness quiet calm as you circle round the planet, making minor adjustments to put yourself in line with where your ship will be, adjusting the speed as you approach the back end of the ship, aiming for the underside of the ship, slowing as you get closer to the ship, pulling underneath, hearing almost like a magnetic attachment and a clunk as the ship stops in line with the spaceship and then gets pulled up into the ship. before you then exit back onto the main ship to be able to share your findings and what you've learned. And then that ship flies towards the star, this planet circling. And it scoops up, a bit like the surface layer of the sun, as it goes incredibly close to that surface, keeping its powerful heat shields facing the star. And then uses what it's just gathered to accelerate it at incredible speed back in the direction of Earth, making its journey all the way home, where you can share your findings back on Earth.